Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Parker Studio. In this tutorial, we will talk about how we can create simple maquette rendering in Enscape for SketchUp. So this is the simple rule which I downloaded from the 3dwarehouse.com. So I want to talk about it, how we can create some white glue render for showing the main concept and subject of our project to the clients or different type of situations. So first of all, you need to press F and click on the create view in here. So I want to hold RMB and look in here and here, go a little bit to the backside, something like that. The options which related to the XYZ is not really important. So unlink the link visual preset, the name is not really important. The pitch is about negative 38 and the eye is about 140. Now in the uh, sun position, you can change the azimuth and altitude completely depends on you. Every type of sun which you like, you can set it for your render and shot. I prefer to use, for example, some render like this and the angle is something like that, for example. So click on the create option in here and press Enscape scene number one. So I'm going to click on the save frame in here, click on the uh, visual setting. And first of all, I need to reduce my field of view, something like that. So I can turn this visual setting off, look like this, change my orbited camera, something like that, something like this, and another one, something like this one. So click on the uh, visual setting another time. My field of view is 49 in here, exposure is about 66. Click on the uh, style option and start your story of rendering so click on the white render as the main shot for your project and subject so something like that is really acceptable and i like it i don't know why because you have the water in here and water surface can completely make some optimized render especially for architectures in the project so click on the visual setting and continue your rendering setup depth of field must be turned on turn off the autofocus Play with the focal point, absolutely, we have some far distance between our camera and the project, so try to increase the field of view. I think something like that can be really nice. 65 meter is acceptable, depth of field is about 18%. I want to use ultra quality rendering, but if you use low config system, you can change it to the medium quality. I prefer to use ultra quality for better lighting calculation. I use GTX. 1650 nvidia and i don't know what's your graphic card so you can optimize it by your graphic power the main option in the white is the outline if you increase the outline you can see what really happened and now you have some graphical and sketchy render i think it can be really interesting and mesmerizing for the clients 36 percent can be really make it more architectural Click on the image bar, try to optimize all the corrections which related to your render. Auto contrast is really nice working in here. I want to increase the saturation to make a warm color more in my render. So 116% is enough. If you want super warm render, you can reduce color temperature from 6600 Kelvin to some number like, for example, 5800 Kelvin. Motion blur is not really useful because we didn't create any type of animations. Bloom option can be reduced to the S6 and lens flare is about 26% because I need sharp render. If you want some faded out render, you can increase lens flare and bloom option. Completely depends on you. Next item is the Wignate. If you increase the Wignate, you can see what really happened in the corners of your render. And I think it can be really interesting for making your render much realistic. 88% can be really nice, but I think it's a little too bit for this type of render. So try to use 74% because it has some faded out blacknesses in here. Chromatic aberration is not really helpful, but it shifts the color caused by optical dispersion. So a slightly decrease image sharpness, but not in the all faces, only in the edges. So now I want to increase the chromatic operation as I can to create some unsharp edges. It can help me to create some cartoony and animation render. So as you can see, you can see the changes in these part of your render. I can't focus on it because we are on the tutorial, but you can test it out by yourself. Click on the atmosphere in here. Next item is the fog option. If I increase the fog option, I don't know what will happen. So I want to increase it as I can and play with the height in here. So 
you can see some changes in the main bar of your shots. In the 109 meter, the height at which fog dissipated, you can see that when I increase the intensity to the 100, our image will be get more faded out. So try to use fog option in your special projects, not in this one. So 16% is enough and height is about 70, normal number. Some brightness can increase a little bit to make my render more alive and realistic. 134 set for the sun brightness. Night sky is naturally useful because now we are in the daylight. Shadow sharpness, I don't know because we have some shadows on the train and landscape. But if you want some faded out shadows, you can reduce shadow sharpness or increase it. In this project, I want to increase it to the 100 to see what really happened. I can see all the details inside and outside of my project. So it's completely related to what you want from your render and your sun studies. If you don't know what is the sun study, you can watch this video which I tagged out for you in here. So 56% is enough. Artificial light brightness not really useful. Ambient brightness not really helpful in this render, but you can adjust it a little bit. 10% for the wind option. In the skybox, I want to set out white cubes like that. If I decrease density, size amount, and variety, you can see we have direct sun power on our project. So your project sometimes will be burned out by the sun power. So when you turn off clouds option, come back to the atmosphere and reset your sun brightness. It makes your render more realistic. Come back to the image bar. I think saturation is a little bit too much because shadows are not black. They are blue and it's not really realistic. I think 108% can be good. Everything is fine in here. I will check out the output. Resolution is good, but you can use Ultra HD if you have powerful graphic card. Finally, I'm going to close the visual setting. Click on the uh, screenshot in here. Select my saving place like the desktop and call it simple white render and press save. It takes a little bit of time and after that, Enscape 3.5.6 will generate some super realistic maquette render for you and you can use it to show the main concept and idea of your project to your clients and your customers. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If this tutorial is useful for you, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you share this content, I will be really grateful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video guys and goodbye.